I'm Ian Law for Wheels. We're up here in Minden, Ontario at the ILR Winter Driving School to see if the Tesla Model S, a fully electric vehicle, makes a good winter car or not. We've got it charging up right now. We're going to head over to where we have our ice, we're going to drive it around and see if an electric vehicle is as good on ice as a gasoline powered vehicle or whether there are problems. Let's go have a look and see what it does. We're sitting inside the Tesla Model S up here at uh, Minden at the ILR Winter Driving School. I'm with Colin Bowen, the owner. He's driven all the way up from uh, the Hamilton area, all the way to Minden. So how many kilometers was that you drove, Colin? Um, it was about uh, 200 through to really and about 80 or so up here. So close to 300. Close to 300 kilometers. Now, with electric vehicles, by far, um, most owners have that range anxiety yep. they're worried about how far they can actually go before the batteries just wear down and they're stuck somewhere yeah did you experience that range anxiety with the vehicle is it a big issue with you uh it's not i mean it's, it's about planning uh when it comes to electric cars there's actually a lot of charging stations around they're just not well advertised at this point um there's a ton of sites out there that mash up on google maps where they all are um and as as that awareness gets out there you start to realize you can actually go quite far which is why you see um, some companies uh, like the folks at Sun Country Highway that did the Cross Canada tour uh, with yeah. electric cars, uh, proving that they can get across the country all on public charging stations. Uh, likewise, a couple of owners in the U.S., they went and picked up their cars in Fremont and California and drove all the way back to the East Coast, you know, to the Boston, Chicago type areas. Um, so range anxiety isn't as much of an issue. It, it requires a little bit of planning but it's becoming a lot easier. The charging technology is getting faster, uh, more amps and volts are available, um, and the locations are just becoming more and more every year, uh, reducing the need to worry about how far can I get. Um, the nice thing about the Tesla approach as well is they're very adapt they're adapter based. And so I'm not stuck to a proprietary charging system. I can plug into a 110 outlet, which is what we're plugged into here today, uh, a NEMA 1450 or a public charging station J1772. Um, and then over time, you know, the model, the, the, the 
system's designed to, to build adapters for other types of receptacles as they become more and more uh, available. So it allows me to plug in anywhere to get that extra little bit of juice. And that for me removes the range anxiety. As long as you're not in a rush um, mm -hmm. and you plan it out, you can get pretty much anywhere in the country on electric. Now, how did, how did you find the electric car as a winter car? Um, electric motors have that phenomenal amount of torque, yep. uh, very linear torque. And uh, most people realize that um, a lot of power isn't conducive to a good winter vehicle because you end up spending a lot of time spinning tires. Yep. How did you feel the electric vehicle with the electric motor and all that torque yep. reacted as a winter vehicle? Well, the first thing that you realize when you get an electric car is they actually, in some ways, make you a better driver because battery consumption really has to do with how you drive. So if you're an aggressive driver, you're going to consume more battery, you'll get less range. And so within your first couple of days of driving, you learn that lesson pretty much right away. Well, guess what? In the winter, as you talked about in the course, smooth driving, you know, slow, consistent yeah. control, really critical pieces. That's actually important for an electric car as well to get most range. So those two work hand in hand. And so when it came to the winter, you know, I already leave space because I want to slow down and, and take advantage of regenerative braking. Um, I don't want to put my pedal to the metal to accelerate because it's going to cost me a lot of battery usage. Yeah. So if anything, it actually has made me a better winter driver from my previous gas cars where I kind of felt, you know, I can just fill up at any gas station. So I'm just going to floor it and be excessive in how I drove. Yeah, the the one issue that I noticed while driving, and, and, and you noticed it too, was the regenerative braking. Now, in the summertime on, you know, dry roads, wet roads, it's yeah. not an issue. Yeah. Um, however, we did notice, and I've noticed this also in the um, Honda Hybrid, yeah. that regenerative braking is one of the main ways the vehicle tries to recover some energy to put back into the system. Yeah. And it relies on slowing the vehicle down and using the brakes, or using uh, not so much the brakes, but the engine yeah. to recharge the batteries. And it provides a braking force on those wheels that are attached to the drivetrain. Um, on the Honda Hybrid, I noticed because it was the front wheels, my concern was on winter roads, icy roads, that that braking force on the front end may have an effect on the balance of the vehicle under braking. We noticed that in this particular vehicle, when you were on full regenerative power, yep. that under braking, it tend to make the back end a little bit squirrely. So yep. anybody with a electric vehicle have to take that into mind that there is a slight different feel yep. to getting off the gas compared to just a regular automatic vehicle um, that there is that braking force on the rear that can balance it and you found a way to overcome part of that by adjusting how much regenerative power is being produced by the vehicle. Yeah, and that's actually one of the great things about the Tesla approach is a lot of it's driven by software. And so the ability to, to switch down the behavior of regenerative braking, turn off traction control is certainly my tools that I have today. But the folks at Tesla are actively watching what's happening. And there's already talk of a, a winter traction control mode. Yeah. And I'll get that for free through a software update. And they're constantly learning and, and trying to evolve the car. And I'm, I'm not going to have to go buy the, the 20 whatever model, the 2015 model, to get They'll that. Update it on They'll manager. update it for yeah. us as, yeah. as current owners. And so um, you know, they're actively learning so that as they get closer and closer to their, their mass production, broadly available car, they'll have learned a lot of those lessons and applied them. Uh, but certainly, you know, that's that's where I felt like it was important to come up to a winter driving course like this was to learn how the car handled and learn a little more about that. Because you, you really, you're not going to learn it safely on the roads. Mm -hmm. And certainly there's no parking lots these days that don't have lights and medians and all these other things. So I can't just go fly it around a parking lot. So so that's why this course for me was important because now I appreciate those settings oh, yes. a lot more yeah. in a winter context. a lot context. to learn about the vehicle. Absolutely. So in my opinion, I've, I've driven... Uh, Porsches and, and high-powered cars on ice and in winter conditions uh, and now I haven't driven the Tesla with uh, being a full electric vehicle uh, The Tesla does indeed make um, a good winter driving vehicle as long as the vehicle is equipped with uh, a good quality winter tires and and Colin has done that with his vehicle uh, There are a few little nuances that have an electric car you have to adapt to but that's all part of owning the uh, the, and the experience of owning yeah. an electric vehicle. And, and, you know, and I think that's that's really in any, any car, you know. You, every time you get a new car, they all behave differently. And, you know, that's yeah. why that's why I say that, you know, courses like what you guys offer are really important for any driver getting a brand new vehicle, especially when you switch from front to rear wheel drive, electric to gas, you know, from gas to electric. Yeah. Um, you know, get to know your car and how it behaves. Great stuff. So uh, what it boils down to is the Tesla Model S is an adequate winter vehicle. Um, just because you have an electric vehicle does not mean you have to put it away and, and drive something else through the winter. It can be done. You plan out your charging uh, stations. 
and you enjoy your vehicle just like any other vehicle. So electric vehicles doesn't mean you're limited to what you can do. Just plan ahead. Thank you very much, Colin. Great. Thanks a lot, Ian. Thanks for coming out to the school. Great. And thanks for the Appreciate opportunity it. to drive a full electric vehicle in the winter conditions. Great. Thanks a lot. I'm Ian Law for wheels.ca.